What's up guys, this is Chris here from Honest Outlaw and today I wanna to talk to you about one of the cheapest carbines on the market. This is the High Point Carbine or the High Point 995. Now, we've put a whole bunch of rounds through this just to give you a non-biased perspective on this particular gun, which is extremely controversial on the internet. Uh, one of the reasons it's controversial is because it's extremely cheap, and I'm sure we'll put this somewhere in the description of the title or something, but I got this gun for around $275. And there comes a significant level of lowering of the expectations when you have a gun uh, that is that low in price that I think maybe most people don't consider when they actually buy the thing, especially reviewers. And that's what I wanted to talk about. There is a real back and forth between whether this gun is good or not. A lot of people say it's the worst gun they've ever shot. A lot of people say it's great for the money, when in reality it's, it's kind of in between. And we'll talk about some of the pros and cons of this gun. What I actually found out with my actual thousand round review, uh, here on this channel we like to shoot a thousand rounds. We don't just like to tell you about it, we like to show you. One of the reasons why you see so much shooting footage in the background isn't because I love to look at my smiling face, but it's to prove we actually shot a thousand rounds through the gun, which actually takes a considerable amount of time. A lot of times in review, you will see people say that they shot 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 rounds through a gun, especially in the ammo crunch, which doesn't seem very likely first off. And second off, the only footage they have of them shooting it looks like it happened in the last 15 minutes. They're wearing the exact same clothes during the entire footage, and it all looks like it's the exact same time of day. So call me a little skeptical. Uh, especially when I see those same reviewers talk about things they could have easily figured out if they just had a little more trigger time on the gun. So let's get into it. So the High Point 995 is a 16 inch blowback operated nine millimeter carbine. Blowback operation is a very standard operation for nine millimeter carbines because it is cheap to you, very reliable generally. The downside to that operation is that you are going to have a little bit more recoil. The interesting way that High Point figured out how to mitigate that recoil is with something that looks like it's from like Dr. No or something. <laughs> it is a spring-loaded uh, recoil pad on this stock here, which is fascinating to me because I don't know the last time I ever saw that, but it does actually work pretty well. The first time I shot this gun, if you go and look at the first shots, you'll see that I actually thought I had a misfire because the recoil was too low. So I was like, okay, that's a little strange, but the, the damn thing actually works pretty well. Is that a point that could break? Probably, which we'll get into here in a minute. Uh, we also have an adjustable cheek piece, which I did not use, but if you decide to put a magnified optic on here, this would be useful. Putting a magnified optic on a nine millimeter carbine that costs $275 would be kind of a funny thought in itself, but I'm sure people have done that. And you can put that magnified optic on this gun if you decide to take off the rear sight, which is adjustable. It is a ghost ring sight, which is pretty cool. Uh, moving up to the front here, we have a threaded uh, barrel that you could put a suppressor on if you so choose. And then we have a hooded front sight that is reminiscent of guns that are much older than this one. It's a proven design and the sights work very well throughout the testing. We have a super cheesy Palmer rail here that you could put lights and lasers and all that wonderful stuff on. Yeah, that looks like it's gonna fall off. I'm gonna be honest with you. You see how it's bowed and stuff like that. I've heard people go back and forth on this. That looks pretty cheesy to me. Uh, however, this rail here uh, would work very well for lights and lasers. It would be a little bit awkward to access it, but you could run a Magpul mount or something like that that would run it up toward the uh, side that might make it easier to interface. Coming down back to the receiver here, we have a stamped receiver. Now, a lot of this gun is polymer, but the receiver is stamped, and I heard people talking shit about that. But let's be honest, HK, SIG, lots of other companies use stamped receivers as well. Uh, they're probably gonna be slightly higher quality than this, of course, and they're probably gonna use slightly better materials, but the manufacturing process, at least, is fairly sound. We've got a kind of a weirdly ergonomic pistol grip here with an extremely small trigger guard which I did not like very much because I got the big ogre hands and we shot a lot of this in the winter. And with gloved hands, this is barely usable and borderline dangerous because uh, you can barely get your trigger finger in and out without actually hitting the trigger. We have our magazine release over here, which is conveniently placed so every left-handed shooter will always drop the magazine when you shoot the gun. Uh, if you are left-handed, stop this video now because you don't want this gun. Magazine fell out. Are you kidding me? Nope. WTF? 
However, if you are right-handed, it does work fairly well, and it does work uh, very similar to a normal pistol uh, magazine release, which uh, is important because the pistol caliber carbine that essentially uses single stack pistol magazines. Uh, we have sling swivels and uh, a number of other things, including this uh, Space Age 1981 looking handguard here uh, that is vented for heat and things like that. If you could ever actually get enough rounds for this to heat it up, go nuts. Now, uh, $300 for a 9mm carbine, what would you use something like this for? And this is why I wanted to stress that this is a review, this is not entertainment, because a lot of the videos I've seen on this is are entertainment pieces, and, and I love entertainment, don't get me wrong. But when you look for a gun review, I always assume people are going to use them for something serious. And now most people don't, but every once in a while they do, so I am responsible to give you information that is fact and truthful to my perspective without skewing it in any way for my own amusement. So $300 9mm carbine, I see this for mostly a plinkin' gun. If you buy this gun, it's probably the only thing you can afford, and you're more likely to have to use one if that is the case. You might live in a neighborhood where you might actually need to use this damn thing. Especially considering 9mm carbines work extremely well indoors. The sound is very light on the ears if you have to shoot it indoors. Shoot a 5.56 indoors, holy crap, might be the last thing you ever hear. So 9mm works pretty well. It also penetrates slightly less after going through the intended target. So 9mm hollow points open up when they hit liquid. You see where I'm going with that? And then after they escape that liquid, they are a lot less likely to go through nine layers of drywall like buckshot would. So if you're in an apartment or something like that, using this for home defense, this might be a legit viable option and it might be the best option you can afford. And in that case, with specific things we'll talk about here in a minute, this actually would be a pretty good option. It's certainly better than a sharp stick and it's a lot better than a high point handgun. So uh, that being said, uh, the philosophy of use is basically plinking, having fun because nine millimeter is relatively cheap and it also would be pretty good for a home defense gun if that is the only thing you can afford. Obviously there's better options. Obviously there are. Uh, is an MP5 better than this? Yes. Is a CMMG Banshee better than this? Yes. But you can also get 20 of these for what you can get an HK MP5 for. So bear that in mind as we continue with the review. Most of the people that I saw shooting this gun on film that had problems were using these magazines. And yes, it is left in this condition because this is the condition the magazine left itself in after I ejected it from the gun. No, we did not find the follower and I thought it was amusing. Uh, so this is, uh, this is the result of using the Extendo mags. That's what they're called. Uh, this is two 10 rod mags glued together in somebody's basement. No, it's not. I wish it was, because that would at least have an excuse. But this is a product that somebody put out that High Point actually recommended for their gun, and they should not have done that, because these are dog shit. These magazines failed me continuously throughout the entire process of review. Uh, we had maybe, what, what would you say, like 20, 20-some 20 failures throughout the process of review in total? Yeah. Almost all of them were from these magazines right here. Even the ones that did not fall apart were extremely unreliable, and that sucks because they're double the capacity of the magazines that you get with the gun, which I bought a bunch of as well. Was there one round in there? They Did are you? stuck. Uh, combo mag problems. So this is important. So I, I was talking about the likelihood of the magazine failure or something like this, even though there's the only high capacity mags. As you can see here, we've had a real serious magazine failure. There's uh -oh. no spring even holding these. It broke? The spring yeah, broke? the magazine broke. Oh man, I we worked so hard to load those. Well, you did. Well, Bubba did one. That's true. I think that's the one I did. So yeah, we're gonna have to load another mag with this ammo. But the problem with cheap stuff is it's cheap. Yeah, true that. These are the 10 round uh, single stack magazines that I found work the best with the high point carbine. And what a coincidence, they're the magazines that actually come with the gun in the first place. It's hard to buy cheap Korean magazines for a Glock and then put in a Glock and blame the reliability on the pistol, when in fact it is the magazines. I'm not saying these are gonna be absolutely reliable for you because we'll get into some other reasons why the gun might not be reliable here in a second. But this, in my opinion, is the biggest culprit for the reliability issues and is, as a magazine generally is in a semi-automatic gun. So you're gonna 
solve most of your problems by running these magazines. The problem that you are gonna create with these magazines is that it's only 10 rounds. And 10 rounds in a nine millimeter carbine kinda sucks. Let's be honest about that. Capacity is not that high. You can get that in a single stack handgun that is significantly smaller and easier to use than this damn thing. On top of that, why run a 10 millimeter, or why run a 10 round nine millimeter carbine for the same size as you could get an actual rifle cartridge other than the fact that you might be using it inside. So if you're not using this inside, obviously it would make sense to buy like a four or $500 AR-15, which would have significantly more punching power than this with a lot more capacity and a lot more accessories and all that fun stuff as well. So even though these are reliable magazines, they're also still fucking 10 rounds and that kind of sucks. So be aware of that. So as far as reliability goes, we still had a couple of malfunctions with this. And that is because this is a $300 gun and quality control on $300 guns is not great. That causes a couple of things. Number one, it causes deviations and tolerances in the parts, which over time can cause durability issues or reliability issues. It, having a cheap gun usually ensures that they use cheaper quality uh, materials when making those parts so those parts wear out faster. This gun will be susceptible to that like any other budget gun, absolutely. And finally, you're going to get some rather cheap ergonomics as well, which will induce self-inflicted malfunctions, which is a fun time. So that's another thing you'll have to consider. After reliability, we're going to accuracy. As far as the nine millimeter carbine goes, the accuracy was pretty impressive. Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't expect to shoot anything further than 100 yards with a nine millimeter carbine, and I could hit six inch plates with this at 100 yards, and that is my standard for accuracy because that is essentially a headshot at 100 yards, and I can't think of a situation in a civilian lifespan where you would need more than that. I don't think you're gonna be out hunting with a nine millimeter carbine, unless you're like in the Book of Eli or something. Uh, but if you had to, you could theoretically do it. So that's kind of fun as well. Uh, ergonomically speaking, there are better guns. Uh, lefties, as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna drop the magazine release. The charging handle kind of sucks to use because it's too far back. Uh, the stock actually fits pretty good and I do love the spring-loaded recoil pad. However, I, I, I worry again that that is a point of potential failure in the future. The handguard itself is very comfortable. The gun is pretty comfortable to shoulder. However, the sights appear to be too low. That could easily be fixed with a spacer underneath your optic or just having a standard mount that is the same size as your AR-15 mount. So just using a regular AR-15 mount like a uh, Scalar Works Absolute Co-Witness will bring that up well above the iron sight. So if you have any kind of problems like that, you can just put a red dot on the damn thing. Was kind of what I was trying to say. Overall, the gun has some issues. It definitely does. But is it the worst gun in the world? I definitely do not think so. For the price point that it comes out, if you are using these magazines, the gun will be reliable. Ish. <laughs> unless you have one that has bad quality control, which is the last thing we're gonna talk about. So quality control is an ability for a company to put out consistent working guns. So what I mean by this is that 97 of these will work, three of them won't out of 100. Whereas if you bought an H&K, 99.9% .9 of them will work. You see where I'm going with this? So there's just a higher percentage that you're gonna get a dud with this. And honestly, at $275, that seems to make sense to me. And I'm not sure why that doesn't make sense to a lot of other people. Uh, you're taking a risk when you buy one of these. You are. You're taking more of a risk than you would buying a CMMG Bench or even an X-Star EP9. And that's one thing you have to be aware of. But if that's the only thing you can afford and you have to defend your life, it's certainly better than a sharp stick. Is that what we should call the video? Better than a sharp stick? One of the things I do really like about it though is it does have last round bolt hold open, which is actually kind of cool for a gun that is as cheap as this is. So I just wanted you to be aware of all this uh, before you go either way on the high point. It makes me no difference whether you buy one or not. Like I said, I, I don't really care. Uh, however, if you're looking for a $300 nine millimeter carbine, for having fun on the range, you're probably gonna have a pretty good time with this. If you're looking for one for, to defend your home with, if you can afford a better one, I would certainly recommend it. I've done a video just recently on my favorite pistol caliber carbines, and this bad boy wasn't on the list because it's not one of my favorite pistol caliber carbines. But uh, if you can go $200 more, I would go on X-Star. If you could go like three or $400 more, I would definitely recommend a Strybog, or uh, if you can go a little bit higher than that, even go a uh, CZ Scorpion. That being said, this is still uh, two or three CZ Scorpions. So if you don't wanna spend a lot of money on a gun, you're not gonna shoot it all that much. 
and this might be a viable option. One of the things that actually is relatively interesting about it is it is kind of scary and it is in fact a gun that does shoot bullets. So theoretically, uh, it would work in a self-defense situation as long as it was reliable. You just have to take yours out to the range and see if yours is reliable because with cheaper guns, there is a more of a chance that you're gonna get one that doesn't work. So. Overall, uh, my opinion on the High Point Carbine is it's good for the money. My overall opinion compared to other firearms is it's good for the money. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help at your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later.